we'll have that that nice reference uh, point for you. Let's see. All right, there we go. We are recording. Fantastic. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I sure appreciate it. Thank you, Nick, for being here. Uh, wow, Nick's got an awesome backdrop. That's a great. That is actually a great reminder that part of holiday attire could be an amazing backdrop. So yeah, that that would be. That looks that looks tight. I like that. That's good. That's good. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to go a little bit different order today. Um, and I don't know, I'm hoping uh, we've got Kevleen on already. Kevleen, are you here? No, no Kevleen yet. All right, um, we're going to go to Mark Denniston. Mark, give us a quick update on what's going on with mortgage this morning. Yep, good morning, everyone. Um, just same thing, rates are just incredible. They remain, you know, basically very low. I just uh, locked one in yesterday at 2.625 for a 30-year fixed conventional conforming loan. Um, all indicators are showing that these rates are going to remain low well into, if not all of 2021. So that's important to note. Uh, just want to briefly go over the new loan limits, 548, 250, the conforming amount. It's gone up to that amount. And then uh, high balance conforming is 776,250. We're able to lock those loans in now and fund uh, those, even though we're not into 2021 yet. Um, and just want to mention again the thousand dollar second opinion program that we have. Um, I did have one. Uh, it was two weeks ago, I believe, where I actually was able to get a quarter point lower interest rate for someone that had thought they had a great rate being offered with the lender they were with. So that worked out very well. Um, so that's going until the end of the year, folks, for that $1,000 uh, to either match or beat uh, an estimate they have. And then lastly, I know Kara's on a call this morning, so she's not on, on in the meeting, but I, I can speak for her. I think we both want to tell all of you, thank you so much for the business you've given us during the 2020 year. What a crazy year. Um, I haven't seen basically any of you since March, uh, which is just amazing. And I personally thank every one of you who've reached out to me for questions, provided me with new transactions. Likewise for Kara, we really appreciate it. We really look forward to working with you in 2021. And for those that have not worked with us before, man, give us a chance. I think you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised. So other than that, everyone, I wish everyone the best holiday season and look forward to speaking to you guys again at the beginning of the year in our next meeting. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, last meeting of the year. Unbelievable, right? Um, all right. Uh, couple quick things, just a quick reminder. I mentioned it last week. I'm gonna mention it again. If you have moved your residence, if your residence where you live physically has changed in 2020, make sure to reach out to your OA or directly to me and let me know uh, so that we can get your uh, info updated so that your 1099s in January will come to the right address. I don't wanna be sending them to an old address that never gets to you and then we've got a fiasco we got to go back later and try to figure it out and then you've got to get your 1099 because you're turning your taxes into your accountant and all of a sudden it's a mess and uh, we don't need that so if you've moved this year please please let me know uh, also just a quick reminder we've got a lot of brokers that are taking advantage of the three opportunities that i have been mentioning um, one to change your uh, uh, email signature uh, get a hold of maria to uh to work on your uh customizing your cma and your buyer's packet uh the, the gorgeous materials that we have for you that can be completely customizable changed in any way shape or form with your uh branch oa we've got people doing that uh so if you're interested in that please please reach out to them on that and then also impacting or inputting your contact sheets. I know we've got a lot of agents that are talking about, okay, I got to get that over to uh, Maria or over to Mora, uh, depending on the office that you are in. A lot of people are taking advantage of it, which is awesome. I'm super excited about that. But if you're not, should you be, right? If you've got, we've got a couple more weeks, right? Let's get it all in and done and ready for the beginning of the year so you don't have to worry about it in January. Let's get knocked out now. Uh, all right, uh, let's talk about some stats. Uh, some interesting things 
Dr. Lawrence Yoon, you guys know the name by now, the economist, the, the chief economist for the National uh, for National Association of Realtors. Uh, we really have been following him quite a bit since the beginning of the lockdown, uh, where he kind of told us what to expect this year and frankly completely nailed all of his predictions on what the market was going to look like uh, through different portions of the year. Uh, and and so pretty impressive. Uh, I was reading something that he had put out uh, just a couple of days ago, I think, uh, well, within the last week. Uh, and I wanted to read a couple of things here because I think it's important uh, for us to just kind of have an idea of maybe what to expect, what's coming. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Yoon says, expect continuation of high inventory, or I'm sorry, not high, of tight, tight inventory, increasing home prices, low mortgage rates, significant job growth, and competitive housing market fueled by buyers looking to relocate as a result of remote work opportunities. Right. We were just talking about the National Association of Realtors put out stats lat, uh, about a month ago that was talking about how people are moving. Uh, the average move is like 15 miles where they from where they are now. So people are moving out. Right. Not necessarily doesn't necessarily mean that the market in is bad. Those homes are still selling and getting uh, moved, but it is causing a lot of people to start moving further out. So very interesting there. Uh, he also expects a strong real estate market through at least 2023. That's three more years of a good housing market. He's predicting at least, he says. Also, uh, he says if we had 30 percent more homes available for sale, we would uh, the home sales would correspondingly be 30 percent higher. Basically, that's just a fancy way for saying, hey, if we had 30 percent more houses, we could sell them. Right. So to give an idea of what the demand is over what we have now. Now, this is national numbers, right? This is national numbers. We know local. It's probably quite a bit higher, right? We know our market here is a, a lot stronger than some other places in the country. So uh, so there you go. Again, he has been nailing uh, what he predicted over the years. So I think something to pay attention to. Let's talk real briefly about some local numbers. We haven't really talked for a few weeks about uh, kind of active listings in the MLS and things of that nature, but something very interesting. I think this is probably your takeaway for this week, maybe this month. Uh, and that is active listings right now, year over year are up. They're up 40%. So week over week, last year to this year, Active listings in the MLS up 40%. I shouldn't say this week. We're in the middle of this week. That's for last week, right? That's incredible. That's insane numbers. And if we look back, inventory has been higher week after week after week uh, in the last uh, uh, six to eight weeks. So as we generally see inventory going down, yeah, inventory is not where it was six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. Uh, it is slowly declining, but year over year, it is way, way up uh, from where we are, which means what? we got to not be sleeping on the holidays, right? I mean, we talk about this every year about how there's so much business to be had during the holidays. You got buyers that want to buy, you got sellers that want to sell. Generally, this time of year, they're really serious, right? They're not just putting their house on the market for the fun of it during the holidays. Uh, but with 40% more active listings, I mean, we have got, and, and we've got the sales to back it up as we go through pendings are up, uh, solds are up, median home price up 13 and a half percent year over year. Not as high as some of the other weeks or months uh, in the past, uh, uh, you know, since spring, but still, I don't think anybody is going to kick 13.5% uh, th increase to the curb, right? We really, I mean, that's a huge number uh, uh, week over week for the for the year or year over year for the last week. Also, I just want to mention showing activity still is high. It is coming a little bit back down to where it was last year, but it is still significantly higher than last year and again this is without open houses without previewing and things of that nature so a lot of those uh, uh key box openings that really weren't showings are now not being factored into the numbers and we're still above last year so again showing activity high 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 all right let's uh hit a calendar real quick and then we're going to get to nick uh calendar stuff coming up first of all the next sales meeting this is the last one for the year Next sales meeting is July or July. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna kick off in July. Uh, we are going to go uh, January fifth. January fifth is the first sales meeting. It's combined sales meeting, eleven o'clock, same time, same station, and uh, we're gonna have some fun there as we kick off the new year. That is not our kickoff meeting. That is just the first meeting of the year. Uh, also. Um, 
Now, what do we got? We've got, like I mentioned at the beginning, and if you jumped on late, yeah, I'm wearing a little bit of holiday attire. Just to remind you, please uh, wear your holiday best, uh, something festive for the uh, holiday parties, uh, Beery in tomorrow and West Seattle on Thursday uh, at four o'clock. Um, there is a prize for best dressed or most festively dressed is the uh, is what we named it. So make sure to do that. Also, also, we have gotten a huge response from your holiday pictures. They're amazing. They're hilarious. They're fantastic. If you have, I want you, if you have not sent one in yet, we need more. We would love to have yours. If you don't have a great holiday photo and you're like, well, taste this, they've already got really great ones. Doesn't matter. I don't even care. I don't care if it's not even a, a holiday picture. We'll festive it up. I don't know. But just if you've got one, have some fun with us. Send it in. We've got a lot of really great ones that have come in. Uh, it's been it's been a lot. It's been a neat little experience to be uh, bringing these in and asking you guys for these. So very very cool. Uh, keep doing that. And then also just a reminder, please stop in. Stop in today to your office and pick up your uh, your gifts. Uh, a, a loaf of bread from Bakery Nouveau. These have a shelf life, right? I mean, there's no preservatives in here. So the sooner you get them and the sooner you start consuming them, the sooner you will be happy and enjoying that. They're amazing. I even had somebody today offer to fall on the sword for everybody. If they don't get picked up, this person would like to eat some more of these loaves. And I don't blame them. I think that that's a, I think that was actually a smart ask. Um, but uh, hold the um, hold the champagne. There's a couple uh, t chocolates from uh, Delatons chocolates. Hold the champagne for the uh, holiday party. We'll drink those together and uh, and kind of celebrate together uh, in the next day or so, depending on which day you're at. All right, last thing that I want to mention for the calendar, and then we're getting to Nick, is the 12th of January. The 12th of January is a Tuesday. Oh, that's going to be a problem. I'm seeing now that's going to be a problem. We've got a clock hour class from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock on the 12th. We are going to do this. We're going to figure this out uh, because uh, this is a clock hour class that we're jumping in. We are doing this in cahoots with uh, a couple of the other offices. It is entitled Upsizing, Downsizing, and iBuyers. And I don't have a description on it. Nolani, I did see you emailed it to me, but it was too close to the start. Uh, we'll put a description out on this, but it should be very, very interesting. And I would love for everybody to get a chance to participate uh, and uh, and catch this clock hour class to start off your year in 2021. So 10 to 1 on the 12th. We'll figure that out. Maybe we will uh, skip the sales meeting uh, that week and push to the following. I don't know. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Awesome. With that, Nick, for part two of uh, what's going on, on the backside of your website and your contacts and how to utilize that stuff. Uh, thank you very much for spending the time with us. I really appreciate it. It's great to have you on. It's it's great. It's a, it's a, a neat opportunity for us. So thank you. Absolutely. I'm uh, I'm excited to be here. I had a lot of fun last time, um, but I do want to share something that was quite interesting. So you had talked about the uh, increased numbers and in sales that were happening nationally. Um, it's funny because over the past couple of days, I mean, I've been hearing it. I mean, throughout the year that mainly starting in the summer that you know, you know, transactions are closing, things are happening, uh, numbers are going up. And just as we've been getting into the end of this um, end of this year, I just keep hearing that this year being record numbers. I just got off of a, a call with a company in North Carolina. They've been in business 35 years, um, relatively. I mean, they're a smaller company, about 120 agents. But November was their best year in the company's history. Um, and I, I don't think anybody really has that in a, as a November month. Um, and then another one that I had there, over 2,000 agents um, in California, and they had their, again, best year of the company was in October of this year. So, I mean, no matter where you go, record numbers are being set everywhere, um, and it's just absolutely crazy. So, um, just basically saying, you know, we're, I'm, I'm hearing it, I'm seeing it across the board, um, and, you know, pressure is everywhere to close them in time and, and, and to find that home. So, but anyway, I'm here to... Uh, talk to you about uh, your CRM. Uh, so today the focus is going to be around um, email human touch. So we have an entire library of email templates, uh, email layouts. We've categorized them, we've designed them, we've had professional writers write them, um, and we wanted to give you, we want you to have access to be able to utilize those. And so I want to be able to show you how you can access those if you haven't already. Um, if you were using our platform, um, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, this is an entirely new application that you probably aren't familiar with. We launched 
um, our new email library uh, template mm, about a year ago, and then our action plans a few months before that. So um, if you haven't been using our system for some reason for um, a couple of years or not have not dived into the emails, this is an entirely new application uh, for you. Um, if you have been in there, this will be a great refresher um, and maybe you'll learn some things that you didn't know already. Um, but the idea here is to be able to give you some tools, tips and tricks um, on what you can be doing and hopefully being able to dive in there and set up some very easy uh, set it and forget it type plans. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. So I'm using an old buddy of mine still, uh, Chip Morris, who used to work with us. Um, I like to pick on him. Um, and uh, so I'll go ahead and utilize his account. And obviously we're looking at his dashboard. But what I'm again focusing on is the email portion. So we're going to go under email and then email marketing. And so from here, what you're going to see is um, you're going to land on all of our stock plans. So you're going to be able to see um, by default all of our stock. You can filter. Um, by the categories on the left hand side. So stock versus Berkshire Hathaway Northwest versus if anybody, if you've customized ones in the office, sorry, Tay, not picking on you if you've created, if you haven't created any yet. Um, and then any of your own personal plans. So um, any, or your own personal emails. But what I wanna focus on right now is going into our stock. And this is everything that we have pre-written, we've um, designed, we put together, we picked out emails, um, but they're all customizable. So you're not locked in in any way um, by these emails. You can go ahead and make adjustments as you need to. Think of these emails kind of like a website template. We've gone in, we've kind of structured it so it's super simple. You don't need to know HTML in order to customize this. Um, but if you wanted to, obviously, you know, thinking of Timely, you may want to send out um, Christmas or Hanukkah or New Year's um, type email. So you can go in here and find the category of the type of email that you are interested in sending. And you can go ahead and kind of see that preview or the thumbnail of the different types of holidays or holiday emails. These are all, again, kind of templates or layouts. So you can go in and customize the content. But if you want to do have, you know, your signature at the top or at the bottom, if you want a really long image, you want kind of a tall image at the top. So you kind of pick the one that kind of speaks to you um, and then you can go ahead and select it and it will bring you into the editor. So in this scenario, we can go ahead and preview on the right hand side the email. You'll notice your signature is automatically added to the bottom. Uh, we can talk about how you can customize that signature in the future, but um, your signature is added. On the left hand side, we pre filled the subject. You can customize this subject if you would like. We have pre selected an image. And you know what? If that image is too tall for you, if you want to change it, go ahead and select that image. And we have an entire library of images. If you scroll down to Christmas, we have 69 photos within the Christmas library. So you can go ahead and click the show more and find the right image that works for you. If you have your own image, feel free to go to my images and upload that image, and you can go ahead and upload that image, um, your own custom image in that scenario. So for now, I will go ahead and pick a kind of a shorter photo that says happy holidays uh, instead. And if I uh, select that, it will go ahead and load that image into that um, section for me. And you'll notice that it shrinks down because it is you know, a shorter image. The salutation for this design is that first line. And you'll notice that we have what we call tokens. You may know them as mail merge fields, but basically they're dynamic fields that are gonna pull something into the message from your CRM. So last week we talked about importing your contacts, um, either doing that via CSV, maybe you're adding them, maybe you're um, syncing with Office 365 or something like that. But you know, pulling in the contacts first name or you know other fields in that list. So when I'm typing in that area, I can select that token button and I can find all the fields that we support that we can dynamically insert. So while I want to keep the first name because that's, you know, I want to personalize uh, Merry Christmas to that person, but I may want to go down into the message text and say, um, just wanted to say a quick note, say Merry Christmas. I can go ahead and personalize, customize this message if I would like. I can adjust maybe the styling, the, the spacing, what I may want to do um, after my name is I may want to also insert um, my website link. So I may put in my website link or something like that. Um, and you can go ahead and do different things of inserting different content. But this is just kind of an idea where you're writing a message. You're saying you may want to say, you know, stay up with the real estate news and put a link to your website or something like that. Obviously, since this is more about Christmas, this is not necessarily about, um, you know, having them drive to your website or go to your website to look at real estate. Um, in this example, this is more of a, you know, keeping you top of mind type of a thing. Um, so you may not want to put it in this type of email, but if you know you did a new buyer, a new seller, um, maybe you did an open house email, things like that, you know, adding a link to your website would be important. So 
But in here, you can go ahead and again, customize it as you need to. And then now that that message has been built out and is done, you can do one of two things or really both. Um, the first thing you can do um, would be to save this. So if you wanted to save this for later use, so maybe you've created, you know, you want to create multiple buyer emails or open house emails, or maybe you're doing an event email, maybe you have an event coming up that you want to promote. You can go ahead and save this. And if you save it, you can put it into a folder. And in that folder, you can then save it with whatever title that you want to call it. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to put this in a new folder. I'm going to call it holiday. And this one is um, Christmas. And I'll go ahead and save that. So it's now saved to my new holiday folder. Um, and that email is called Christmas that I saved. Well, now the second thing is I may want to send this. So if I want to send this now, um, or if I want to schedule this to be sent, I can go ahead and click the send button. And in here, this now gives me access to all of my contacts and all of my groups that I've created in my CRM. So again, last session that we went through, we talked about adding your contacts, putting them in groups, organizing your database. This is where that becomes important because if you created a database for buyers or past clients or sellers, um, you know, first time home buyers, um, things like that, you can go ahead and select that group or individual contacts that you want to send this to. So if I want to go in here and say, you know, what, I want to send this to Nick um, and I'm going to send this either. I can send it now. I can send it later. I can also receive a carbon copy or copy me on a, this email. So you can choose those things as you are configuring it. Well, because the example that I'm using is Christmas, um, I'm gonna say, you know what? I wanna send my Christmas email later. So for later, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I wanna send this on the 24th and I'm gonna do it in the evening, or I could say on the 25th and I wanna do it in the morning, but basically when do I want them to actually see this message? So obviously this one being a holiday, kind of few schools of thought, send it obviously on the day of, um, but they obviously wouldn't be reading it on Christmas day. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, but maybe you want to send it the day before, or maybe you purposefully want to send it the day after because you might have a higher likelihood of them reading it. So kind of think about when you want to send that message. Um, holidays can be a little bit tricky because, you know, you want to send it on the exact day or do you want to send it a little bit before, a little bit after just to get the higher possibility of engagement. But if you're doing an event, obviously you would still want to send it based upon the event information. So now I've gone ahead, I've selected my individual or individuals because maybe I did a group. Um, I've selected um, when I want to send it. So at this point, I'm going to say I'm going to send it later. Um, I picked the date, I picked the, the time frame, and then I'm going to click schedule email. And you'll see you get a little email confirmation to say email has been scheduled. So that is from our email marketing, um, the ability to you know find an email um, in our in the library, um, selecting one, customizing it. Um, so taking an existing one, customizing it. You can save it and then you can also schedule it for delivery. Now we have the my templates here um, on the left hand side. So these are my personal templates and we created the holiday uh, group and we created my Christmas email. And so if I need to go back to that Christmas email, I can go ahead and do that and I can make further edits. I can send this to more people or schedule more emails to be sent out to delivery or if I'm done with it or if I, you know, I really hated this one, I'm going to delete it. I can go ahead and delete it. If you do not want to use one of our templates and you want to create a new email from scratch, go ahead and do that. There is a create email option. It's going to be completely empty there uh, besides your signature. And when you go to message text, there is a full page editor. So I can go ahead and say hi, and I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to insert my contacts first name. I hope you have a great uh, weekend. Um, and then maybe I want to insert an image. And uh, for the image, I will put in um, a couple with the keys. And if I want to, I can select that image and I can resize it. Um, and then I'm going to say, thanks for your business. Um, so I can go ahead and customize this. I can move the image around. I can resize it. I can highlight any text and if I wanted to, I could insert a link. So maybe I want that link to go to my website or maybe I want it to go to uh, Booster Club or whatever I want it to go to um, and then I can save that. And after any changes that I save uh, or make in this area, just click save and you can now preview what that email is going to look like. So you can go ahead and, and make all those changes. And then when you're done, 
you can again save this for later use, schedule it to be sent or sent it now or send it now. So all of these emails, um, obviously, you know, you want to see what the success rate is, or if you schedule something, you want to see what you've scheduled. So to do that, you're going to go back to home uh, in my dashboard. And we have added, um, if you go to your CRM emails, or you can go to your email insights there, um, this is going to show you everything that has been sent, everything that has been opened, and everything that has been clicked for email sending out from the back end of your website. And so if we want, we can filter by the different types of emails that we're interested in. And you should probably have some emails already going out, maybe from listing alerts or save favorites or market reports. Uh, or maybe seller reports, things like that, that you may have already set up. Um, but what we have done is we used email marketing as something that we sent. Well, what we're looking at right now is everything that's already been sent out, not something that's been scheduled. So I'm probably not gonna find anything for email marketing the past seven days um, because I haven't sent anything for my email marketing the past seven days. But I have sent other emails like listing alerts and market reports and seller reports and things like that. So I can see all of those when they were last opened, how many times were they open, things like that. Um, so I can see all of that. Now, what we did do as this example case is we scheduled an email to be delivered in the future. So from this same page underneath the search button, there is a view emails with future delivery. So that button is actually going to take us to any emails that we've gone through our email marketing and scheduled for a future delivery. So we can see that we're sending it to Nick. We're saying just wanted to say Merry Christmas. I can view the email. I can see the date and time in which it's going to send. If I need to search for email or people that I'm sending emails by email address, I can do that. I can check the box. I can delete them or I can change things from this experience um, for that schedule. And if you end up you know, selecting a group of contacts, uh, maybe you select a group that has 100 people, then you'll see 100 emails scheduled to be sent. So from all the emails that you have created in email marketing or that we have created in email marketing, um, those also are, or many of those are also used in drip marketing campaigns. So if you go to marketing and action plans, you will see a number of plans that have been created uh, some of these have been created by Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Northwest Real Estate, and some of these have been created by us, Reliance Network. And so to know the difference, you can actually tell by the icon. So we have a little settings wheel that says stock plans, and then you have a little globe type thing there that says company plans. You can also create your own personal plans if you would like to be able to you know, change out emails, remove emails, things like that in that uh, scenario. So you can do all of that. Well, there's a few plans that I kind of think that you should look at um, probably starting maybe today, assuming that you have added all of your contacts and started organizing your contacts. I would say there's probably four that are super easy to do uh, and make the most sense. Uh, the first one would be birthday action plan. So assuming you've added contacts and you put in their birthdays in their, um, in their contact record, you can say, I want to add everyone that has a birthday, because by default, just having a birthday in the contact record, we don't want to send things without you actually being ready to send them, right? So just because they have a birthday in there, we're not going to do anything unless you tell us or tell the system, I want you to send an email on their birthday. So to do that, you would add the birthday group, which we've automatically created. And the birthday group means everybody with a birthday. Um, and you basically are going to say, I want to add the birthday group to the birthday plan. And when you do that, Everybody in your contact list that has a birthday is automatically on an annual basis going to get an email on their birthday. And so you can see right now in these few examples with Chip, um, he has five contacts and they have birthdays throughout the year. And what we do is we don't care about the year, right? When we're sending a birthday email, it happens every year. So we're looking at the month and the day. And on that month and day, this email will be sent out. We do update this email annually so that you know you're not sending, they're not getting the same email every year. And you have the option if you wanted to, to customize this email. So if you wanted to create your own, and I'll show you how to do that, you can customize this email yourself as well. But super simple, assuming you have contacts that you added and you put in their birthday, adding, con adding the birthday group basically gives you a very good opportunity on an annual basis to have an email sent out on a, on a timely, uh, in a timely manner. The other one 
is wedding anniversary. So again, it works just like birthday. You have a wedding anniversary date in the contact record. Um, you add the wedding anniversary group and on an annual basis, they get the wedding anniversary email. The third one would be home anniversary. So again, same scenario, same experience. Um, I, you make sure you have the home anniversary date in the contact record, you add that group and on an annual basis, um, you, they will get a home anniversary email. The, the last one that I wanted to, um, that I think would be a very easy one to set up would be monthly newsletter. We have a monthly newsletter that we write in house, um, general real estate information about what's going on. Um, this will automatically roll over to 2021 um, at the end of the year. So if you add people today, um, they will roll over to 2021. Um, we, we finish the email about two weeks prior to the next month. So um, the one for January will probably be posted by the end of the week, basically. Um, and then you'll be able to see it. But you can go ahead and preview just to see what was sent out. Um, again, all of this comes from you. It has your signature. We personalize it to the contact. Um, in that scenario um, in this experience. What I would recommend is find those those groups or contacts that you want to send them to. I can't imagine whether you did business or are going to do business or they're um, you know someone that you you know met um, you know sending you know real estate information about what's going on on a monthly basis um, really shouldn't hurt that experience. So we do have a contact group called all contacts if you wanted every one of your contacts to receive this um to receive this uh monthly newsletter but if you want to limit it to only a couple of people or past clients or um, referrals or something like that you can select multiple groups or individual groups that you want to receive this and then everybody on that monthly basis and as you can see we schedule this to go out on the first of every month um, they can receive this as a personal touch from or personal engagement from you there are other plans. They become a little bit more, they have different use cases and become uh, and use them in different ways. Um, I would say those four are probably the easiest to really engage with right away to get started. And you would use your email insights to see the success rate, how many were sent, how many were opened, how many uh, were clicked. There are other plans. So we have um, the um, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services 8x8 plan. Um, so they have, what you'll notice in here is that it's a combination of emails and tasks. So what this is saying is on day on day seven, you should have a handwritten note that you send out to a prospect. Um, and then on day 14, you will have an email that is sent from the CRM automatically on your behalf to the prospect. So you'll see it coming from you to the prospect. On day uh, 21, there is a task for you to complete a phone call um, or, or to reach out by phone to that prospect. So this one is a combination where it's going to recommend that you perform tasks on certain days, as well as doing automated emails. And so in here, this is kind of a, to help that, um, that engagement uh, piece on there. Now, if there are any plans that you like, but you don't love, so using that cold stone reference and the different sizes of uh, ice creams. Um, so if you like it, but you don't love it, um, then go ahead and copy it. So if you copy it in the top right hand corner, I'm going to say this is going to be my eight by eight new agent copy. So in here, now that I've copied it, it's now become my personal plan. And in here, I can go ahead, change the days, change the order, change the task, add emails, um, edit emails or anything like that. I can personalize this plan or any plan exactly the way I want it to be. So basically, you don't have to start from scratch. You can find something that you think is 90% there and then, you know, complete that 10% to make it, you know, perfect for you. So very easy. Check the box to add emails, add tasks or remove tasks. And then when you're ready, go ahead and just add the contacts or groups to the plan. For this plan, this is what we call a days plan, which means that everyone starts at the beginning and they will go through a series of days and they will go through those activities. So for example, let's say you have 10 contacts in a buyer plan or a buyer group today, and you add the buyer group to this. Those 10 contacts are going to start on day one. And in seven days, you're going to get that task reminder. Well, let's say two weeks from now, you add five more contacts to the buyer group. They're automatically going to be added to this plan and they're all going to start at the beginning. They're all going to start on day one. 
So this one's dynamic. So as you're adding new contacts to a group or to the plan, they always start at the beginning. The other plans we looked at, monthly newsletter, birthday, home editor, those go out on a very specific day. These ones are dynamic based upon you adding them to the plan. If for any reason you have, maybe you have been using MailChimp or, or something like that, and you have you know, your own email campaigns or things that you wanted to move over into our system, the first thing that you wanna do is to create the emails and email marketing. And then after that, you would then create a new action plan and then you would go through this process. So if you have it, just like that days plan, you want you know seven emails over 30 days, you would create a days plan and you would call this whatever you want. And then you can go ahead and click save. And at this point, you can now add your emails by clicking add email. And you can go ahead and add your emails to the plan. And, uh, and then at that point, you would then add the dates to each one of these plans or each one of these emails. Very easy to, once you have the emails in, you can then create that plan um, and that experience. So that's everything that I wanted to show you today. Um, hopefully you have your contacts in from our last session a couple weeks ago. So this should be a very good way to kind of jump in, start utilizing some things that have already been created for you. So you don't have to start, you know, writing new content. Um, but if you find that you um, either have content or you find yourself writing the same email all the time, um, go ahead and add it in here and you can have it, you know, can to be able to go out when you're ready. Um, so you a lot of, you know, long-term uh, saving tips or, or tips for the future that you can save some time ongoing and also try to keep yourself top of mind. Um, this is still at the end of the day, a relationship business, as much technology as I, as I put in front of you, um, people are going to pick you for you and you being the expert in the area. I'm just hoping that a few of these tools and tips will make it that much easier to make sure that your name, your face is top of mind when they're ready to buy and sell. And because as Tay mentioned, it's not slowing down next year. <laughs> no, it's it's not. We gotta we we gotta get in front of people. We gotta be we we gotta be in front of their eyeballs more often. And you know, I can look on the backside of uh, our website and see the stats, and and I know that these are tools that are underutilized by our agents. Right, the majority of people on this call right now uh, don't have these up and going. And this is why we're trying to offer opportunities uh, where even the, the um, uh, OA staff will help you get your contacts into the backside of your website, right? We're trying to help you guys the, the best that we can to get you to a place where it is as simple as possible to utilize uh, some of these tools to continue to be top of mind. Because as we saw with those National Association of Realtor numbers last week, you gotta be first and you've gotta be present when they're ready or somebody else will be and you'll lose those, right? 13% of all buyers return to an agent that they used before that's insane right these tools will help you uh maintain a larger number of those and that's why it's so important to get nick on here to uh for a couple of meetings to kind of help us as we get going and get geared up and, and ready for 2021 and, and hopefully can get some of these things up and going for you guys um also also all those templates the emails if you've got specific things you want we can help you create those so if you're looking at nick do it and you know you're like oh my gosh nick was ba -ba 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 -ba, and done and great uh you know well you know kind of, he does it all the time right some of us are like i've never done this before that feels really uncomfortable i would never try that right that's okay you don't have to we'll do it for you you just let us know what you want and we will set those things up with you for you right so you've got support we've got the tools uh, let's get this stuff up and going for 2021, right? Nick, awesome. Thank you, man. I really appreciate Absolutely. you coming on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll do uh, we'll do some more stuff in the future in 2021 with you, I'm sure. Awesome. Sounds um, good. Right on. Uh, all right. I see uh, just real briefly, we're going to have Kevleen jump in and tell us, Kevleen, is there anything you want to uh, send us out from, uh, from equity with uh, for the end of the year? Kevleen, I saw you there. One once. She's probably closing the deal for somebody right now. Twice. All right. Um, lastly, what are we gonna do? I saw I saw something and it was just a good reminder. I guess I'll end on this note. 
Uh, it was a quote, maybe you've heard this before, and it just says, you can't change where you are overnight, but you can change direction, right? So if you feel like you need to make some changes, don't worry about making all the changes overnight, but let's change direction. Get a hold of us. Let me see what we can do for you guys. We've got some really awesome things coming in 2021. Uh, super, super excited about that as we will uh, start rolling out some things as we go into the new year. So look for that. And uh, and again, uh, the holiday party's coming up. Come in and get your your stuff that you RSVP'd and we'll see you all tomorrow. I'm going to stop recording and then we will do a new and price reduced for anybody who's got that and the recording.